Um, thank you for the opportunity of um, uh, being with you this morning. And so, as you know, um, the chapter, as was mentioned, is Genesis chapter 13. And um, we have been going through the book of Genesis in our lesson study, haven't we? And um, I think we have gone through uh, Genesis chapter 13, but we're going to read it through this morning and we're going to share some, um, some thoughts. I'm not the only one who's going to speak. I'm going to also allow you to give me your thoughts, what you think about you know, what is happening in, in, in chapter 13. Because many times we look at the Bible and we look at certain passages and because we're familiar with it, we don't really spend a, a, a good amount of time, um, you know, just going through it, just digging a little bit deeper. So this morning we would just want to do that. So Genesis chapter 13. So if you have your Bibles, um, we're going to read through the passage. We're going to read through the chapter. And then we're just going to share a few thoughts. So Genesis chapter 13. I've got the New King James Version. I don't know what other versions you are using. So, so I would read verse 1 and 2, and then you can take over from there. So it said, Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And, and he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also who went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them, that they might dwell together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together for seven. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Mm -hmm. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Verse 10. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and was sinning greatly against the Lord. Verse 14. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had departed, turn around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will give it for major offspring like the dust of the earth. So that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the land and put up the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. Here is a question. What is happening in this chapter? What do you think is happening here? A family yeah. row. A family row. That's exactly um, what is happening. But what kind of, you know, within this family row, what kind of, um, what kind of man does Abraham prove himself to be? A generous man. He's a very generous, generous man. Mm. Exactly. So if you, you know, so, so when I read this story, I don't know about you, you know, cause sometimes, you know, we can, um, 
no, let me just, no, I don't know about you, but when I read this story, I'm thinking, no, if I was Abraham, I don't know if I would have behaved the way that Abraham behaved. I don't know if I would have looked at Lot and said, you know what, look up and anywhere that you want to go, you go, you know, and I will take whatever left, whatever you left behind, I will take it. I don't know if I would be that generous like, like Abraham. But here was um, Abraham, the older, the older of the two. Lot was his nephew. So by right, Abraham should have been the one to say, you know what? I am going to go to the right and whatever I choose, you, 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 um, you know, you get the what left. But Abraham let Lot choose what he wanted and let Lot go where he wanted to go. Now, if you, you know, when I look at the two men, I realize that Abraham, as Joanne said, and as somebody has pointed out, was a generous, a kind and godly man. So he did what was godly in the sight of God and what God would require of him. Lot, on the other hand, was a man that was, you know, in his attitude, you could see that he was selfish. In his attitude, you could see that, you know, he didn't care about his uncle. You know, what he wanted was, was, was something that, 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 you know, he wanted to be rich. He wanted to be famous. So he chose what he thought was the best ever possibly decision that he could ever make. As we know, what Lot chose was not the right decision. It was the wrong decision. And when Lot left, the Lord turned to Abraham and said, you know what? No, look up. Look up. And when you look up, this is what you will see. Everything that around you, I will give to you. Now, that says to me, I don't know about you, that when we serve God, God have a way of working things out for our good and in our favor. When we allow him to lead, he, uh, you know, he worked things out for our own good, just like um, uh, 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 Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for God know the thoughts, he know the plans that he have towards each and every one of us. He know the thoughts and he know the plan that he have towards um, Abraham. From the beginning, he was telling Abraham, he was going to be a great nation. He was going to be all of these things. And he has pro, you know, God has, you know, in Genesis chapter 13, I believe that God came through for Abraham, even though things didn't look as if, well, you know, it is working out and it's panning out. Any other thoughts? Any, anybody want to jump in here and say something that's jump out at them at this passage? I think young people tend to just grab what they see, whereas Abraham was more mature and able to, 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 to use his maturity not that it says that in the bible but we know that young people will just do it with their eyes they just choose what their eyes see whereas because people are a bit when you're a bit more mature you tend to think of think it through a little bit more mm. True. any other that's a good point i, I just want to say that um it, I, I appreciate Cheryl's point because it does come with maturity and it comes with that when you have a relationship with God, you begin, yes. you begin to realize, and, and I have not realized this until late in my life, that when you let God choose for you, it will always be the best. Um, it's, you, I think I live my life doing my own choosing and looking up like lot and seeing, you know, what's, where's the best way to go? Which is the best thing for me? What's the best way to do? But when you come to a position in your life, and I don't think it comes quickly that you learn this, didn't for me, that when you allow God to do the choosing and you go to him for everything and, and say, which, which bit do you want me to go? Which path do you want me to go? It always turns out for the best, even though it, it doesn't look like, like it to, to worldly eyes. But it, it's, it's a... It's a trust in God that he is controlling your life and, and let him choose what you, what you should do next. Mm, I, just, I just want to say, you know, in conjunction with Cheryl's point, the point that you made there last Sabbath, as you know, we were looking at a lesson study and um, the question that I, while facilitated the lesson, um, would you arrange a marriage for your children? And well, with a lot of a lot of discussion was engendered by that question, and you know most people agree that 
nowadays we cannot we cannot you know arrange the marriages for our children but we should get we can get involved because the young people just like Cheryl said you know they may not see all the things that we see but then as parents and because we're old and because we're allowing God to guide us especially those of us who you know who are being led by God we pray we, you know we we talk with them and so forth and so on so it's true that Young people, you know, they just see. Well, thank God that with maturity, it brings about the blessing from God when we get involved in what whatever God is asking us to do because He will. Amen. Rising. I think um, choices are not just made instantaneously. I think that's a myth. Choices are made based on our history, our experience, and all the rest of it. And I'm quite intrigued why Lot would choose what he chose. I don't think he just chose that out of the blue. Something was Coming happening that, exactly. him before he made that choice. And um, I think we all have to understand that our choices are not just made instantaneously. They are based on some premise from which we are coming from. And it's quite interesting that he chose to pitch his tent towards Sodom. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was I was gonna come to that because if you look at um, before um, this issue here, Lot was a man that you know um, <laughs> he was even cheating his uncle <laughs> um, before. So if he, you know, so his decision to you know Lot was spying out the land a long time ago. You know, he was spying out the land a long time ago. So he knew where the best bits were, or, or, or so he thought where the best bits were, and he knew um, what he wanted. So the moment Abraham said, choose, Lot didn't have to think twice. You know, he thought where he wanted, you know, because he was spying out the land a long time ago. And many a times we read the Bible, you know, sometimes I usually say we need to read between the lines, and sometimes we need to back up to the other chapters to get a picture of what is going on. Um, in the chapter that we are reading. And so if you back up a bit more, you would you probably realize that before, Lot was a man that wanted the finer things in life, so to speak. You know, so he, you know, the decision to pitch his tent towards Sodom was not a, a immediate decision. He was spying out the land. So he knew where the best bits were. He knew where he wanted to go. He knew where the riches were, so to speak. Or so, you know, and, and so he chose to go pitch his tent towards Sodom. As I said, that's another sermon in itself, um, um, pitching your tent towards Sodom. So next time you invite me, I'll, pre I'll preach a sermon, you know, on, on, on pitching your tent towards Sodom. But, um, but here is the thing. When it comes to making decisions if we are not and and, and you know and, and let us not um forget that abraham did make some mistakes um abraham made some mistakes but abraham was still connected you look at lot lot had a relationship with god i wouldn't say he didn't have that relationship with god he had a relationship with god but in everything sometimes as joanne said we like to take over from god and do our own thing and I think in, in a sense, Lot lost that, 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 that connection in a moment. And we can lose that in a moment too, whereby we think to ourselves, you know what, I, I need to do this. But if God step in, I'm not gonna, I, he's not gonna put me in the way that I want to go. So I am just going to make my decisions and I am just going to do what I want to do. And then I will invite God in later when things mess up, when I mess things up. And it is, this is what we have to be careful about when we are making decisions. If we are Christians, if we're a child, if we're a child, if we're a child of God, we need to allow God to lead and we need to follow. Because when we allow him to lead, then the, the mess that we will make of our lives, we won't make it. We won't make it. But many a times we just wanted to do what we want to do. I remember when I when 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 I wanted to um, when I got the call to become you know to be a minister. I didn't want it to be a, a pastor. Not at all. My aim was to be like Lot. I wanted to make money, so I wanted to do electronics engineering. You know, so I went into doing electron electronics engineering, and for years, God, you know, God has been calling me to, and I, I just ignore it because I thought pastors don't make money, pastors are not rich, pastors are not, 
um, what I wanted to be. I wanted to be rich. And so I wanted to be an electronic singer. I went and did exactly that. I wanted to be that. But God let me go and do what I wanted to do. And then a few years later, he brought me back to where he wants me to be. But I had to go through all of that to come back to exactly where God wants me to be. You know, it was, you know, it was a struggle, you know, but that's another testimony, you know, just to give an example of how we, when we wanted to do things or we go about doing it and did not consult God in what we wanted to do. Abraham was a father. He was a man of God. And because he was a father to Lot, just like the father with the prodigal son, he allowed him to go and do what he wanted to do. But Abraham never gave up on Lot. He still prayed for him. I believe that he still prayed for him and he was still there interceding for him. When God came and said he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham was there to say, come on, Lord, there must be some righteous people there in Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't really subscribe to this idea that... Um, uh, the relationship is important. I think we need to have the right relationship with God because sometimes people have a relationship with God, but it's rather the wrong one. <clears throat> and so when we have the right relationship with God, we'll have the right attitude towards what God is um, telling us to do. And some of the choices that we make, we may even God, though God forgives us and, you know, he blesses us, we may never recover from the consequences of those choices. Mm. True. I want to say something. Let's go back to the beginning of this problem. God did not call Lot. He called Abraham. Mm. Have mm. you ever invited somebody to a feast in your house and he came and carried your table and all the meals and went back to his home? Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel? So God called Abraham. Lot was invited by Abraham. So if Lot had had this attitude, Abraham would have invited him to come along. In fact, these were the type of people God said, break away from, break away from your father, your brethren, leave all and come and we show you. So Abraham knew the land belonged to him and his family. And he told a lot about this. There was no choice to really make to tell you how grievous this greediness was. They were in a desert. The place that was green was Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham picked Lot because he treated Lot as one of his children, to be frank. He did not Abraham, but as a child. But here he is, grab, 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 grab. <laughs> looks at the, the green place. Oh, that's where I'm going. And to tell you, God was disgusted with this attitude of Lot. The very next day, God told Abraham to look left, east, west, including Sodom and Gomorrah that Lot has chosen. He said, this belongs to you. I pray that God will give us this spirit of humility, not grab, grab. I, I, can I just say that um, in verse 13, it says, now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. They were sinning greatly against the Lord. So it seems as if the reputation of um, Sodom and Gomorrah was known. It was already known that these people- It was were already known. Yeah, so it was, it's interesting that Lot decided to, to ignore that as a, he's a Christian, a, a Christian of that time, he follows the Lord, um, and to ignore that and to pitch his tent toward there. You know, and I can just imagine this really is, and I, 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 I just got that from um, Pastor Barrett. This really is the the story of the of the um, prodigal son. To watch your your um, adopted son, let's say it's his nephew, but he's adop his adopted son, um, leave your the safety of the Christian home and to go out to into the world to the people who are wicked and sinning against the Lord and thinking that's an okay thing to do. I think that's something that many of parents have experienced to see their children go out into the world and pitch their, their tent towards Sodom. So the pain that Abraham must have felt when he gave Lot the choice and Lot chose that, the worst, the worst place to go 
as a Christian, but the place that looked good must have caused him terrible pain. We see later on in the story when Lot gets himself um, captured, um, the first thing Abraham does is, is muscle an army and go out and capture him, so like, uh, uh, bring him back. So like um, the prodigal son, he's watching Lot, even though Lot is far is um, over in near Sodom, Abraham is still watching him, still looking after him from afar, still no doubt praying for him. When Lot does get himself into trouble, he goes and rescues him. So I just want to bring out, it is, it is quite like the story of the prodigal son. So what is the lesson um, um, for us today in, in, in the story of Lot and Abraham? For each and every one of us, there is a lesson that we can, you know, that needs to be learned. And for me, the lesson is, you know, don't be greedy, man. <laughs> but they, they have this saying, you know, you know um, the grass is not really greener on the other side. Is it? <laughs> it might look greener. But when you get there, it's not really greener. And that, that was the case for Lot. You know, he thought the grass was greener. But when he eventually got there, he realized that, you know what, it's not so green at all. And I couldn't, to be honest, I can't even say he realized that because even when um, they were, you know, the, 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 when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, I think it was, a, 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 for me, if I'm reading between the lines, it must have been difficult for Lot to, you know, to leave everything behind and, 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 and run. You know, even his wife, you know, didn't want to leave everything behind because they had accumulated so much. They were living the life in Sodom and Gomorrah, but the grass, folks, is not greener on the other side. So do not look at what other people have and think to yourself, well, you know, boy, I would love to have that. You know, I would like to be as rich as this person. We don't know how they got their riches. So do not look at them and think that the grass is greener. It might be greener, but it's not really greener, if you see what I'm saying. So always, always look to God for guidance. Let him lead. Let him guide you if you are a Christian. You know, we are on this platform this morning, and those stories are for us to learn from. Let us learn from Lot um, 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 example. Let us learn from Abraham. Let us be more like Abraham, the father. So when somebody said, you know, you sometimes have to leave your children to go and do what they want to do to experience life. Let us learn from, you know, from Abraham. But as, you know, learning from Abraham, let us be more like the Abra you know, like Abraham in that we become more gentle, we become more um, loving, we become more compassionate. We allow God to lead and we must follow.